Well, good morning and welcome to this morning's Queens Royal President's Remote Land Use Public Hearing. This hearing is being live streamed on the link from the webpage of the Office of the Queensborough President at www.queensbp.org. For those who wish to testify and haven't already pre-registered for speaking time, you may do so by visiting www.queensbp.org slash land use. Please note your opportunity to speak will follow those who are pre-registered. Written testimony is welcome from those who are unable to testify remotely. All written testimony must be received by 5 p.m. today and may be submitted by email to planning at queensbp.org or by conventional mail sent to the office of the Queensboro president located at 120-55 Queens Boulevard, room 226 Kew Gardens, New York 11424. Today, I am joined by planning director and staff, Irving Poy, Lisa Atkins, Victoria Garvey, and Vanessa Ordonez. Ordonez. Lisa, please review how this public hearing will proceed. And it's an honor to obviously be here this morning. Uh, it's the first land use hearing I will oversee as the borough president. I'm excited to get to work with each and every one of you and excited about what we're gonna achieve for Queens. So Lisa, take it away. Lisa, you're muted. Thank you, Borough President, sorry. The public hearing shall be conducted in the following manner. For each item, the applicant will be called to give a description of the zoning action requested, an explanation of the proposed project, and respond to any questions from the chair. The floor will then be opened for public testimony. Each speaker will have three minutes to state their position. A signal will be heard when three minutes have passed. When you are called, please state your name for the record and if you are officially speaking as a representative of an organization or member of a group. The calendar item or application you are speaking about and whether you are for or against the item. Then begin your testimony. Speakers will be called to testify on an alternating basis for or against an item. At the discretion of the chair, should there be a large number of speakers on any particular item, it may be put on second call. Thank you for your cooperation. Thank you, Lisa. All righty, you've just been advised on the proceedings of this hearing and how it will be conducted. Please keep your comments focused on the application you are speaking about. Please stay within the allotted three minutes when you hear the signal. Please wrap up and finish your comments. The chair reserves the right to ask speakers for clarifications or further information regarding the application or comments. Lisa, please call the first calendar item. Calendar items number one and two are related. ULERP's number 200178ZMQ and 200179ZRQ. The applicant 63-38RWKOP LLC. Affected community board number six. Please begin. Good morning. Um, just going to go ahead and share my screen. Great. Um, good morning. My name is Frank St. Jacques. I am uh, an associate with Ackerman LLP. We're land use counsel for the 9132 63rd Drive rezoning. Uh, I'm joined by members of the project team. Um, and I just wanted to say before I start our, our brief presentation, um, welcome Borough President Richards. It's really an honor to be uh, presenting at, at the first land use hearing. So we're here to present an application requesting two land use actions. The first is a zoning map amendment to change an existing R4 C22 zoning district to an R7A C23 zoning district. And the section, second action is a zoning text amendment to establish the Mandatory Inclusionary Housing Program or MIH within the rezoning area. The purpose of the requested zoning map and text amendments is to facilitate the development of a nine story mixed use residential and commercial building with 74 units at 9132 63rd Drive and Regal Park. Under MIH, 
approximately 24 of the 74 units would be permanently income restricted. The development site, shaded here in red, is located on 63rd Drive and Austin, and Austin Street in the Rigo Park neighborhood of Queens Community District 6. The area was zoned in 1961 with an R4 zoning district and a C22 commercial overlay that has not been changed in over the past nearly 60 years. The adjacent zoning district to the east of the R4 C22 is a mid-density R71 non-contextual zoning district. The surrounding area is characterized primarily by residential use shown on this land use map in shades of yellow. The darker yellow represents multifamily buildings, which are common in this area. Commercial uses shown in red are located along 63rd Drive, Queens Boulevard, and the C81 zone portion of Austin Street to the west of the site. Some other details to note on this map are that 63rd Drive is a wide street and the elevated tracks for the Long Island Railroad's main line are located directly south of the site. The approximately 114 foot wide Long Island Railroad right of way creates open space to the south of the development site. The rezoning area is shown here on this tax map, uh, as well as the development site. Um, it's bounded, the rezoning area is bounded by 63rd Drive, Austin Street, a line 100 feet from and parallel to 63rd Drive, and the north side of the Long Island Railroad right of way. The rezoning area consists of the development site, again outlined in red, that's uh, tax lot 16 on block 3104, and a small portion of this very large lot 14, so this small portion here. The proposed uh, development site has a lot area of approximately 13,731 square feet, and it has 140 feet of frontage on 63rd Drive and 100 feet of frontage on Austin Street. You can see in these photographs of the development site some of the multifamily residential context uh, that surrounds it. The site is currently unimproved and vacant. The proposed zoning map amendment would replace the R4 C22 zoning district with an R7A C23 as shown in this zoning change map. The proposed rezoning would allow for the production of new housing in Queens Community District 6, which has an extremely low vacancy rate of around 2%, and the majority of the housing stock was built before 1970. The proposed rezoning would facilitate new residential development with the provision of permanently income restricted housing under the MIH program on underutilized land on a wide street near mass transit. The proposed R7A zoning district would permit comparable bulk to the adjacent R71 zoning district, but with the predictability of the contextual zoning envelope. The proposed development is a new nine-story mixed residential and commercial building. It is approximately 68,656 square feet. The first floor contains approximately 10,318 square feet of commercial floor area. The remainder of the building has approximately 58,338 square feet of residential floor area. And as I mentioned earlier, that uh, yields about 74 dwelling units. The building rises to nine stories um, ab ab above a six-story base, and there's 10-foot and 15-foot setbacks um, before it reaches that nine-story height. The cellar has an attended parking garage with 45 accessory off-street parking spaces accessible via curb, a new curb cut on Austin Street, and approximately 24 of the total units, that's 30 percent, uh, would be permanently income restricted under MIH. The proposed unit distribution is 20, 21 studios or 28%, 31 bedrooms or 41%, and 23 two bedrooms. The proposed development has, as I mentioned, has a height of 95 feet uh, after 10 and 15 foot setbacks. And as you can see here on the uh, site plan, um, there's considerable space uh, uh, between the adjacent building uh, to the east of the site uh, along Austin Street. Here's some uh, illustrative massings um, or renderings uh, showing the massing of the building in context. Uh, the ground floor commercial space in the proposed development 
would likely be divided for local retail and service type uses to serve the surrounding residential neighborhood. The uh, developer's intent is to find tenants that are consistent with the uses found along 63rd Drive, which are more locally oriented than the uses found along nearby Queens Boulevard. These local uses include eating and drinking establishments, pharmacies, salons, retail shops, cleaners, grocers, among other uh, local uses. The mandatory inclusionary ho housing program requires a set aside for permanently income restricted housing. These charts show the 2020 um, area median income for the New York City area at the 80% and 60% income bands and the 2020 New York City affordable monthly rents at those bands as well. The applicant intends to work with a nonprofit MIH administrator to manage the uh, MIH component. And to this end, the applicant is exploring an arrangement with the Met Council. Um, through discussion with the community board at the um, initial land use hearing and then at the, um, the full board hearing shortly afterwards, the applicant has agreed to provide uh, two of the MIH income bands at 60% of AMI. Um, that's our presentation, but I'm happy to answer any questions and there are other members of the project team here that are available to answer other questions if, if there are. I'm gonna go ahead and, and stop my screen share, but I'm happy to pull that back up as needed. Thank you, thank you for your presentation. A few questions. Um, so I, I know Councilmember Kosowitz had mentioned something about the the breakdown of um, incorporating more studios in one bedrooms. Is that what was reflected in this presentation, or um, or this is is what you presented to her as well? So this is what we've um, what we had initially presented. It hasn't been adjusted in response to um, to that that. Um, concern raised by the, the council member, but this is still illustrative and, and we're happy to work with her office um, if, if a, a different unit distribution is, is deemed more appropriate. And um, what's the uh, average size of the unit, the studio units and ones? Um, let's see, just give me a moment to look that up. So um, just as a, at the outset, um, the Unit sizes would be subject to um, oh the program the, uh, right right so so the MIH uh, there's there's uh, minimum unit sizes for the MIH uh, which I think is four hundred I did mandatory I think um, let me let I'm me sorry, I just don't have that information in front of okay, you but I'm happy to provide about, it but you can get that back to us Absolutely. and um, I thought the breakdown of the 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 affordability was good you didn't seek a subsidy from HPD. No, no, this would be an entirely um, uh, privately funded development. So, so requiring no HPD subsidy to, um, you know, uh, subsidize these uh, permanently income restricted units. And which MIH option are you, you working towards? I hope option one. Uh, we're, we're actually working um, with MIH option two to provide uh, more affordability, 30% rather than, than 25%. But as I mentioned that the applicant is, is looking to provide Two of those in income bands at 60% AMI. Um, tell me about your MWBE um, commitment and your and your local hiring agreement. Or is this project labor, or are you working with labor, or is this uh, open shop? So we we don't have specific commitments yet. Um, that's something that that uh, we're happy to discuss with with your office and um, you know put something in writing uh, with with respect to. Uh, to that going forward, but but at this point, uh, we, we don't have that uh, specific information. Okay, yeah, I, would, I look forward to having that that conversation. I'm very happy to hear you, you're working with uh, local or, or seeming, seeking to work with uh, Met Council. I was going to ask you, are you working with any local nonprofits? So we look forward to hearing a lot more about that as we move forward. And then, you know, there was some concerns by CB6 around traffic. Uh, you you want to talk about that? <laughs> Which is which is complicated, I'm assuming. But uh... or, yeah, it's you know I, I think one of the the concerns is that um, you know Austin Street is is a one way street. Um, I, I will note that this project underwent a, a full environmental assessment under the, the city seeker um, requirements, uh, and it was determined that there would be no uh, uh, substantial um, 
adverse impact, or excuse me, uh, there would be no adverse impact as it relates to, to transportation here. Um, so we are happy to work with, with the community going forward, particularly during construction. Um, I'll note that uh, this, this project will require coordination uh, with DOT um, to facilitate, um, uh, sorry, DOT's Office of Construction Mitigation and Coordination uh, before the issuance of, of permits that would have any uh, impact on, on traffic in the area. Uh, so we're confident that, um, you know, through working with, with uh, off the Office of Construction Mitigation and Coordination, uh, we can alleviate potential concerns relating to, to traffic and construction. Alrighty, and the only other question I had was, obviously there seems to be a residential building behind your building, or has there been any questions about um, shadow casting on that particular site or? There, we, we haven't, um, actually this, that concern hadn't been raised yet. Um, there's a building uh, to, the, to the east of the site, um, but there's a significant amount of room between um, where this building, the, the proposed building rises to its full height uh, and that, that adjacent building. So we, we I, I don't anticipate problems, um, nor have we, we uh, they've been raised yet uh, to our office. Right. And you mentioned uh, your retail strategy, which I'm assuming it's, it's very complicated market time for the market. Uh, how are you going to fill <laughs> your, 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 uh, your retail space? Sure. So at this point, we're, you know, um, obviously like, like everyone else in the city, hoping that, that we're going to see a different retail environment um, a few years from now when, uh, when this will be on the market. Um, as, as I mentioned, the, the idea is to, is to find local tenants um, sort of comparable to what's uh, existing along 63rd Drive. Um, there's a lot more larger and uh, national retail along Queens Boulevard, uh, but we think this site um, is more appropriate or more well-suited uh, to, to more local retail. So we're hoping to find, um, you know, something in the way of, you know, food and beverage, uh, that type of thing, a small drugstore, um, but really, it's 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 hard to tell, you know, what uh, what the, what the market's going to look like um, six months from now, much less, you know, a year and a half, two years from now. Uh, you're working with Met Council. Are they, or do you have any community facility for the seniors? Um, so uh, this project is um, contemplated as as a heirs uh, project with with respect to that the MIH component. Uh, affordable independent residence. No, no, I, I know that. I, I mean, okay. I meant like, is there yep. dedicated community room space for seniors? Is so. So the reason I mentioned that the heirs is there's a requirement that uh, 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 there's a set aside, a two percent set aside of the the building floor area um, that would be required there. So we're still in um, uh, the the amount of that space is would be is is being determined now, um, but there's not. Um, additional space on the, the, the ground floor, non-residential space is all commercial. However, there will be um, programmatic space within the building uh, for the senior component. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa. Calendar item number three, Julep number 200190ZMQ. The applicant is Munir M. Islam, affected community board number 13. Please begin. Good morning, Richard Lobel of Sheldon Lobel PC for the applicant. I would start out by saying to uh, the borough president, it's good to see you in this capacity. Uh, sadly, uh, the district 31 loss is, uh, is, is more than compensated for by the gain of all of Queens. So congratulations again, Donovan. Thank you, Richard. Um, so we're here today for the Hillside Avenue rezoning. Uh, we, we have the uh, general manager of Far Best Pharmaceuticals, Intakab Ahmed, with us today, as well as the project architect, Victor Folletti. Uh, Frank Noriega from my office will be sharing his screen. And so before you, you have 21432 Hillside Avenue. This is a roughly 11,000 square foot site populated by auto repair, used car sales, permitted here pursuant to a BSA variance, which expires in 2022. Um, so Farbest Pharmaceuticals is essentially seeking a rezoning in order to establish a pharmacy at the site with accessory offices. Next slide. 
You can see from the circled area, this is an R2 district along Hillside Avenue and Vanderveer Street. Uh, it's noticeable that the commercial overlays uh, that are currently existing along Hillside Avenue exist both to the northeast and east and southwest of the property. So clearly Hillside in this area has a commercial flavor, which is really kind of uh, demonstrated by the next slide, which shows the land use map. I'm sorry, so the tax map first, uh, which demonstrates about six lots, including the lot owned by the applicant to the left of the screen and five lots uh, to, the, to the right of the screen. So that land use should be on the next slide. So here you have the land uses in the area, including along this block. So why is this rezoning such a good rezoning? Uh, in addition to the benefits that this is uh, providing to the local area through having uh, a business, a productive business, as well as uh, bringing employees to the site, you can see that there's five commercial stores uh, and uh, storefronts located to the east of the site. And so these are all two-story buildings which are permitted in the R2 district, but would not be permitted with regards to the commercial use. The ground floor commercial use on all of these is grandfathered, existing non-conforming. So the commercial overlay district here, the C23, will result in conforming uses for all of these, uh, all of these ground floors, uh, thus allowing them to make changes pursuant to as of right zoning. So it's really something that allows the zoning map to really reflect what's actually on the ground. Next slide. So we include pictures of the local area and Frank, if you want to just page through these, you can see the used car with repairs. Uh, you can see the ground floor commercial immediately adjacent to the site as well as along Hillside Avenue. Um, so this really presents a nice opportunity to correct the map and to allow for a productive use at the site, which is evidenced by the plans materials. Uh, Frank, if you want to move to the site plan and the plans demonstrating what's gonna be produced at the site. So here we have the zoning change map. Again, very simply providing for a C23 overlay along this 100 foot deep corridor between Vanderveer Street and 215. Here we have the massing of the building at the site. This would be uh, a roughly 9,000 plus square foot building with ground floor retail and pharmacy of 7,000 square feet and roughly 2,500 square feet of accessory office above. Uh, the project would include roughly five parking spaces and a loading berth. Uh, the parking spaces would be accessed by a curb cut along Vanderveer, the loading berth accessed by a curb cut along Hillside. Uh, I would note that um, the community board along the way requested that the loading berth be moved to the Hillside Avenue frontage so as not to uh, interfere with the adjacent residential neighbor um, Mr. Islam, the principal here, as well as Intikaba Med, the project and general manager, uh, we're more than happy to accommodate. We've had really wonderful conversations with the community board to date. And so these changes were made to the site plan in order to uh, accommodate that. You can see the loading berth along Hillside Avenue. Next slide. So these are just um, zoning calculations including included with the project. I would say that this is not a application which uh, addresses bulk here. The bulk that is at the site will be permitted at, as of right. The, the, uh, the bulk before and after the rezoning is the same. Uh, the difference here, of course, being the commercial overlay and allowing uh, this productive uh, pharmacy use. Um, and Frank, you can page through the, the final slides um, showing the storage space and then the layout of the building. I would say that the local area demonstrated a, a willingness and, a, and actually were excited about the opportunity of having an additional pharmacy here. This is a small local pharmacy from an operator which has other locations within the city. Uh, this will provide some uh, retail to allow for people to buy uh, local um, products at, at a, a store nearby. They'd be able to walk to the site. Um, so this was something which was um, seen to be a benefit to the surrounding area. Um, and as Frank just pages through the last slide showing the offices, I would say that there was a uh, an issue with regards to potential uses at the site, um, which was addressed through a restrictive declaration, which was shared with uh, the local area. So I'm um, sure probably the, the borough president has questions with regards to the restrictive declaration, which became a condition of the community board's resolution. Um, the restrictive declaration, oh, I'm sorry, 
that's actually that's actually for Jamaica Avenue. This is Hillside Avenue. Uh, the only uh, the only issues that were addressed with the community board as far as this site were the um, the movement of the loading berth as well as a planting buffer. Uh, the planting buffer appears as an eight foot strip along the rear of the property uh, and uh, is shown on the slides to allow for some separation between the uh, pharmacy user, user and the, uh, the local residential area. And I'm happy to answer any questions about the application. Yeah, I think uh, you could just go through, I know there were some concerns with the exterior lighting uh, for security purposes. Um, so could you just go through that a little bit? Sure. So one of the great things about the application is that this property has previously been before the community board with regards to this longstanding BSA variance. And so uh, what we're able to do through this application is to remove really a very unattractive auto sales and repair shop and put forth a, a, you know, a productive building, one which is tastefully designed for the local area. The discussion around lighting was such that they, uh, the area and representatives from the area said that they wanted the lighting to be shielded and to be facing away from the residential neighbors. Uh, this was is something which is easily accomplished and, and Victor Folletti, who's the architect, uh, discussed this at the community board hearing, said it would not be an issue and that the intention was to, uh, to provide for security at the site in the form of lighting, but not to uh, bring lighting that would uh, somehow disrupt uh, any of the local um, residents. So we're happy to accommodate that. And there was also a discussion with regards to security at the site. Um, being a pharmacy, uh, there's obviously um, uh, strong security measures which are taken including a uh, gating of the property uh, when, when not in use. And so um, again, these are conditions which we are happy to abide with. And we had a really successful and um, you know, very spirited and, and, uh, and um, you know, really productive conversation with the community board in this regard. Uh, last two questions, uh, MWBE, local hiring, where are we at on that? Yeah, you know, um, it's something which we've discussed internally. Uh, the job itself is rather small uh, as far as, uh, you know, as far as the construction and jobs that would be created. Um, I know that uh, from discussions with the owner, they've discussed that it would be preferable to have local hiring uh, for employees uh, at the uh, retail pharmacy location. So uh, it's something which we're, we'd be happy to work towards and would happy to be have the borough, to have the borough president's input. And also construction. Uh, for construction as well, uh, again, I know it's a very small job. Typically, when we enter in these conversations, it's in the course of discussing a uh, multi-use uh, building with residential, which is a kind of a larger construction project. This is a rather small project, but, um, you know, it's again, it's something that we're happy to talk talk about um, and, and uh, you know, work towards. All right, I look forward to that conversation. All right, thank you for your presentation. Thank you, Borough President. Guess we'll go to the next item, Lisa. Uh, Calendar item number four, you'll look number 200252Z and Q, the applicant Marina Plaza 63-12 LLC, affected community board number 13. Please begin. Thank you. Once again, Richard Lobel of Sheldon Lobel, uh, joined by Antonio and Joe Marino, who are the um, owners and applicants for the property, uh, as well as Victor Folletti, the project architect, and Fianne Baton, uh, an attorney who works with me on this matter. So, uh, Borough President, before you, you see 24501 Jamaica Avenue. And on the land use map, you can see that there is uh, a property here, which is an existing roughly 15,000 square foot lot. Uh, this is located on J Jamaica Avenue, just north of the Nassau County border. And so we have one tax lot here, roughly 80 feet deep, uh, with roughly 144 feet of linear frontage along Jamaica Avenue, which extends somewhat to the west. So the property right now uh, houses a shopping center. Uh, the shopping center contains two uses, which would be defined as PCEs, physical cultural establishments under the New York City zoning resolution. And so the property has been before both Community Board 13 as well as the BSA in that the larger of the two gyms, PCEs, uh, was the subject of a BSA special permit and subsequently a variance. And so um, that PCE was approved by the community board and eventually by BSA. And so um, that community, that uh, PCE has since left the property. Um, so now there's a, a vacant PCE space as well as an additional um, Taekwondo studio, which would also be uh, qualified as a PCE 
that has not yet gone for a special permit. You can see from the land use map before you that this is a stretch along Jamaica Avenue, obviously heavily commercial, as is evidenced by the C-13 commercial overlay. So there is le legal existing commercial use along Jamaica Avenue and at the site. And so the rezoning here, which is similar to the last rezoning, but slightly different, seeks to take that C-13 overlay and to make it a C-23 overlay. But what's the basic benefit of this? Uh, there are two. The first is that C-2 allows for a wider range of I think you cut out, Richard. Pretty froze. Commercial uses, so as to prevent these. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, good. Uh, to the extent that for any reason you can't hear me, I know Fan is scrolling through the slides and will be able to continue. Um, the C13 overlay here, this, the change sought is to change it to a C23 overlay. Uh, this would, in addition to permitting additional commercial uses, would allow for the gyms to be legalized at the site. Uh, one of the gyms is already there by BSA variants, but the other gym would need to go through a legalization process. And you can do that with a C1 overlay. You have to have a C2 overlay um, because the zoning resolution 7336 does not allow gyms in C2 districts. It's a shortcoming of the zoning resolution. There's often discussion at city planning of changing this, but for now, uh, we, we need this in order to allow more than 50% of the commercial floor area in this shopping center from going dark. Next slide. Uh, you can see here that there's an existing C13 overlay. And on the right, it merely changes to a C23 overlay, a very straightforward change. Next slide. Uh, as Fan pages through some of these storefronts, you can see uh, local commercial retail restaurants, uh, Body by Fitness, which was the formerly occupied PCE. And then here are the plans for the site. Uh, the plans demonstrate a one-story commercial building uh, of roughly 14,000 plus square feet. So at a permitted FAR of one, this is at an FAR of just slightly under one. Uh, but you can see here unit four and unit six on the site map show you the physical culture establishments. And you can see just how much lot area is taken up by those two uses. So much like other rezonings we've come to before community board 13, uh, this is quite important for us to be able to allow for these expanded uses. It was one of the land use committee's concern that this site remain occupied and not go dark. Um, you can see here just a general floor plan uh, demonstrating the existing uh, physical culture establishment as well as um, the, uh, the uh, PCE and restaurants. Unit 7, which I apologize is the Taekwondo uh, unit, uh, which was all the way to the right, is demonstrated on the map. Uh, on the right of the map. Next slide. That's it. That's it. So um, now we talk about the restrictive declaration. So the uh, local community board was in favor of allowing this to proceed, but had concerns over the potential to um, occupy the space with a, uh, with a hotel and subsequently with a homeless shelter. Obviously a concern for local residents and one of the reasons why C2 overlays were, were of concern, particularly on this area of Jamaica Avenue. Um, according to the zoning resolution, there's uh, one of the provisions is that if you are near a, uh, an expressway, uh, you're permitted within a certain number of linear feet to open a hotel. Uh, and this sadly, because there are other C2 overlays which would not be impacted by this rule, but because of the fact that we are near the Cross Island, this would allow this site to be occupied by a hotel and also by a homeless shelter. Um, the owner here has no interest in that. They wanna produce a, uh, uh, a development here, which is um, consistent with local uses. They want local retail. They just wanna basically allow this shopping center to continue going forward with these uses. And so uh, presented the community board with a restricted declaration, which essentially uh, eliminated the opportunity for this owner and owners going forward to occupy the site subject to condition with a hotel or with a homeless shelter, which again, I mean, the hotel, as we've demonstrated, would be, um, uh, you know, a very small hotel with with um, reduced parking. It would not be a really productive site for a hotel. But just to reassure everyone, uh, the owner said that they would be happy to enter into that declaration, presented that at the community board. The community board had some revisions to that, which they gave us and which we were happy to accept. And so uh, they overwhelmingly approved the application, I believe, by a vote of something like 41 to 1. 
So that's really the conclusion of the application pr presentation and we're happy to answer any questions. MWBE, local hiring. Yeah, so um, interestingly, Borough President, uh, this is one of those applications where there would be no work uh, as, far as, the, uh, as far as the application is concerned. There's no development at the site. Um, the, the FAR is close to maxed out at a 0.97. So uh, there's no real construction jobs to speak of. Uh, with regards to local hiring, um, while that is kind of the purview of the individual applicants uh, within each of the properties and each of the shops, uh, from my understanding, there are uh, local employees which are employed in some of these restaurants and, and potentially would be in the PCE as well. So uh, again, very locally oriented business, uh, kind of a limited commercial storefront, but, um, but people are generally happy with having it. Know to stretch well. I go. I go to butter cookie sometimes. So. Oh, great. <laughs> Probably need to go to the gym after I go to butter cookie. By the way. Right. There you go. <laughs> I, All no right. <laughs> what you said, Richard? No comment. <laughs> Smart man. Um, all right, uh, all right. This is pretty straightforward, and 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 you said you entered into the restrictive declaration, so I mean it's, it's pretty straightforward. So thank you. Thank you, Borough President. Thank you. But get used to those two words every time you, you come you come to see me. Remember, local hiring, MWBE, local partnership. We're on the case. That's actually three, but go ahead. <laughs> All right, we'll take it. All righty, good seeing you. All right, we'll go to the next application. Calendar item number five, ULERP number 210005. PCQ, the applicant, departments of Sanitation and Citywide Administrative Services. Affected Community Board number seven. Please begin. Okay. Jonathan George, uh, joined from Department of Sanitation Office of Real Estate, joined by my colleagues Stephanie Prince and Andres de Leon. Everybody can see my screen? Are you sharing your screen? We, we don't see it. Oh, boy. One moment, please. I did look to share the screen. There we go. Can you see that? Yes. yes. OK. Uh, good morning, Borough President. Um, I'm joined, again, by my colleague, Stephanie Prince and Andre de Leon for the Queen 7 District Garage Overflow parking lot at 122-1031st Avenue, Queens. So this is for the site selection and acquisition of the 122-1031st Avenue parking lot. Um, this is, DSNY is seeking the site selection and acquisition of 122-1031st Avenue College Point for continued use as an overflow parking lot for the Q7 7A garage operation. This is block 4378, lot 18, and block 4377, lots 29 and 30, lot sizes of 37,590 square feet, zoned M2-1, located in the Special College Point Zoning District. DSNY has utilized this location since October of 2015 under a license agreement with the private ownership, and 16 to 24 trucks and pieces of equipment are stored on this lot. As you can see from this image here, this is just showing the relationship between the Q7 district garage to the northwest and the Q7A boom garage to the northeast. And this is the lot right here that we are currently utilizing. So the current Queen 7 garage complex operation uh, is located at 30-0421st Street. That's block 4346, lot 75 on a block northwest of the project site. The facility is approximately 134,564 square feet on a 485,000 square foot lot and collects approximately 1,775 tons of curbside refuse and recycling per week from the 247,000 residents of Community District 7. Mechanical Broom Annex Q7A to the Q7 garage is located at 30-19 122nd Street, block 4350, lot one. Q7A Annex is adjacent and northeast of the project site. This one-story facility is approximately 36,400 square feet on a 48,900 square foot lot and houses and maintains the DSNY Mechanical Room Annex for District Q7A. Q7 
Garage serves other agencies within this part of Northern Queens, typically maintaining three to four sister agency vehicles, primarily from the Department of Parks and Recreation and Department of Environmental Protection. Importantly, the Queen 7 Garage will be undergoing extensive floor slab rehab with a target date of completion being summer of 2022. That project is ongoing as of this summer. Uh, personnel and equipment will be displaced, increasing the need for DSNY to retain use of this 31st Avenue lot. And this is just an image looking north of 122nd Street, the district garage to the left, and the broom annex is to the right. Here's the tax map detailing the lots in question. There are three of them here. This is the zoning map with the proposed project site. And some photos of the current conditions at the lot. As you can see, we store uh, equipment here. The Euler progress uh, was filed on July 1st, 2020 with DCP, certified by City Planning Commission on September 14th, and the Q7 Community Board Committee meeting, the Land Use Committee meeting was on the 13th of October. So in conclusion, DSNY is seeking the site selection and acquisition of this 37,590 square foot parcel at 122-1031st Avenue in the borough of Queens to continue to support the operations for the Queens 7 and 7A garage. The space provided by approval of this application will ensure DSNY operations continue without disruption and trucks will not be parked on neighboring streets. We have no future plans for construction of the project site. And that's all, thank you. Thank you. Uh, just two questions. So the, the term of the lease is five years here? Yes, yeah, so it would be five years upon approval of the application. And why five years? Uh, five years, well, we've been there using a license for five years previously. Um, and after so long, the site must be lurked. In addition to that, the, the garage we had for the Q7 district will be over uh, presumably by that time. And uh, the need for the space hopefully will have uh, been reduced. Um, only other question I had was, I believe the community board had requested um, or recommended street cleaning on College Point Boulevard uh, from LAX Avenue to the Van Wick at least an additional two times a week. Where, uh, where are you at? Right, so we uh, actually are reviewing the viability of that and we believe that we should be able to um, accommodate the community in this respect. Um, we don't have you know, something definitive at this moment, but that is something within the possibility that the SMI can accommodate. Okay, so by the time we have to make a recommendation, I would hope we figure that out. I think that should be the case, yes. Okay. All right, that's the only question I had on this. Right, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I think that finished all of the applications. So this hearing is closed. And thank you all for attending. Seeing no, no, no one from the public, or Lisa, you wanna take, take it from here? Um, thank you. Uh, the next public hearing is scheduled for December 17th, 2020. 2020. All righty. Thank you all for attending.